because we became a business, which we all were before, but they did a great job hiding that from us. And the old guys, the old guys, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm older than all of you. The, the, the ones who've been in radio, Rick, you'll tell them. It, it became, they, it was always a business, but we, they never told us that. They tricked us into thinking it was fun. And so we had a great time going in there every day. But now we're moved in with all these stations. And God help you, they moved the guy who was your competitor a year ago into the studio next to you, and they expect you to perform and to be good at what you do? Well, when I was hired by Z100 in New York, I got to go back to fun because our station out in Secaucus was the worst radio station facility I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> Rich Davis will tell you. Rich, you have a lot to tell them. This place just sucked. And, you know, and the thing is, is I, I, when I got there, they kept selling the radio station. So the new owners would go, oh, yeah, we're going to move into Madison Avenue, and we're going to be, uh, we're moving you into New York City. No, no, don't get used to this. Let's not redo anything. Let's, let's not clean the place because we're leaving. And then they'd sell the company. And then so, it, and so on and so on. So we were working out of this shithole radio station, pardon my language, but it's what it was, for years, having a great time, running up and down the hallway, shooting the fire extinguishers at each other, and we got back to where, where fun radio was, and that was great. Well, about 2000, year 2000, I guess, they moved us to these beautiful, stunning studios in Jersey City, New Jersey, overlooking the Hudson River and the World Trade Center. Unbelievable. I mean, to work in New York wouldn't have been as great because we had the most beautiful picture postcard view of downtown Manhattan. I don't know if it's just unreal. And you know what? It was cool. It was good, but it just wasn't. We had to be clean, and we had to be, we had to be polite to people in the building. <laughs> and, and that's about the same time in around 2001. I decided, I don't know, is this why God, my God, put me on this earth to play the same song over and over? to uh, talk about stupid, stupid stuff on the radio and hope the phone rings and someone will have a comment about it. And uh, I made the decision that I was doing nothing in life. This wasn't what life was all about, and I was going to quit radio. I was ready to walk away from it. And I had some plans, had a little money in the bank, not a lot. And then, not to be a total bummer, but on September 11th, 2001, you know what happened. We watched the whole thing. I mean, everyone has their story. I'm not going to bore you with mine. But we, we had a 50-yard line seat. We watched the whole thing happen. September 12th, we all showed up for work that morning, not knowing what to do. We had to drive through barricades with guys with machine guns. We finally got up to the radio station. It's 5.30 in the morning, and I have a staff looking at me like, what do we do? I mean, the last time we were on the air before we left, we were, t we were talking about is flirting on the internet, cheating. Well, I think that's what we were talking about when a plane slammed into the, in, the, uh, the World Trade Center tower. We, we can't finish that conversation today. I don't think that'd be appropriate. Didn't know what we were gonna do. So I walked into the studio first, right around 5.30. I turned the lights up, went over to the board. I didn't take my prep in, because usually when I walk into the studio in the morning, I have just a big pile of just stuff. I I, I, there's no way to prep for this day. And who are we? to talk to a community that just went through this. Who gave us this, this right? So I looked down at the board, and one pod is still up, and it's the audio from CNN, which is where I left it the day before when we all vacated the building. Turn on CNN. No one's going to listen to Z100. Who wants to? Z100? The world's under attack. Who wants to hear that? Who wants to hear that? So I looked down to the right on the phone lines at 5.30 in the morning, and I haven't seen it since. All 20 request lines were blinking. I'm like, what the hell's going on? There must be a problem with the line, something. So without getting the rest of the crew, I just I turned down CNN. There was dead air. What do you have to lose? Who's listening? I put on my headphones, open my microphone, and say, Z100. And I push the phone line. And that's when I fell in love with the radio again. It was unbelievable. The first caller. Hi, Elvis. Thank God you called. You, you answered. I, my name is John. I'm at exit 16W on the Turnpike. No one's stopping to pick me up. I need to get to South Jersey. My family can't hear from me. That their phones aren't working. Could someone come by and pick me up and take me? Hold on, John. Second caller. My name is Missy. 
Missy hadn't heard from her father, who worked in downtown Manhattan. She said, Dad, if you're listening, you know, we want to hear from you. Thank you, Missy. Good luck. God bless. Line three, you're the only station we can hear at Ground Zero. We need supplies. We need water bottles. We need water in the bottles. We need boots. We, it, it, here's the thing. That right below your station, there's, there are these ferries going back and forth. Get people to bring this stuff to the ferries. We need them now. Great. Line four. Hey, is John still on the phone? The guy on, on the turnpike. Yeah, hold on. Connect the two. I'm pulling up to 16W. Where are you? I'm standing here. I've got a blue shirt on. I see you. I see you. I'm going to pull over and pull you. I'm going to take you home. Great. Well, I'm not going to bore you with the next three days, which was nothing but calls like that. And I was... I was given a lesson in what radio is all about. And it had to take something as fierce and just god-awful to remind me and all of the staff of our radio station what radio was about. And that was serving the community and serving the people. Being there for them. We were licensed by the people of the United States to do that. And we forget that. You know, one day you're playing ten in a row on a non Repeat work day. <laughs> and the next day, you're on, the, you're on the phone with Target trying to get baby booties so they can put them on dogs who are sniffing around ground zero. It was awesome. For three days in a row, we did this. And we did play the same songs over and over. But they were requesting God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood or something. I mean, it, you remember what it was like. It was a red, white, and blue time there. You know, we were, we were in love with our country. And it was an awful time, but at the same time, it woke us all up. It woke me up. And I'd go home at the end of, the, of every, every shift just worn out and more satisfied with the job I'd done ever in my entire life. And from that day on, I once again was reminded that, yes, radio is in my blood, and I need to be there. Which brings us to today. We don't want these travesties. We don't want these, these devastating events to happen every day, so we'll have a reason to communicate with our, our, our listeners. But you know what? People wake up every morning, and I know it's my job to remind them there's still a world spinning, there's still some music out there, and there's still, there's still traffic. When you're stuck in, tra stuck in traffic, I'm there to help you through your devastating drive to work, which makes people cry someday sitting in two-and-a-half-hour traffic. Our job is to be there for the people, for the listeners. And so for that reason alone, we are all so fortunate to be able to do that for them. That's why I hope that's one of the reasons why you are in radio. Well, so that leads us to today, where I have, I guess I have to think this through. Who's my audience? I have an audience of students who are about to hop out into the crazy world, and I have an audience of people who are already in the crazy world. I guess my best advice to the students, if you want advice, uh, what Dano said, ditto to Dano, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I was just thinking about this. The staff on my show, they, they've only worked at Z100. I think I only have one person on my show that's worked at another radio station. They all started as interns, and we have 12 people, 13 people on our staff on the morning show, in the background and, and on the air. Only one of them has worked at another radio station. We're not, we haven't been out there looking for seasoned professionals because I think every time we look for them, we were pretty much disappointed. So get out there and do what Barry Manilow told us to do on American Idol the other night. Did you watch him? Did anyone turn him off? I watched him. I'm a big Barry fan. He, when asked how to succeed, Barry Manilow said it's two things. Number one, you find your opportunity. And number two, you work hard. Opportunity is you get your foot in the door no matter how you can. I know I sound like a broken record because this was told to you earlier today. Find a way. Just get in there. And number two, work your ass off, and you'll be surprised where it will lead you. Look at Rush Limbaugh. I, I can't stand listening to Rush Limbaugh. But look at the success this guy's made for himself because of the Barry Manilow theory, the opportunity, the work hard. He was a, a crappy FM disc jockey in Sacramento, I believe. And he wasn't going anywhere. Nowhere. One day he was offered a shot to do, I think, a two-hour show on the AM talk station. Look where he is now. He didn't even know he wanted to do that, I don't think, but he was in the right place. And a lot of it's luck, but a lot of it is determination. I wish you all the best of luck. 
And I just think you are so much further than you know. 